Before his 25th birthday, John owned and operated a million dollar business with more than 100 people on his team. He's the author of Living College Life on the Front Row and has twice been awarded Speaker of the Year. By age 30, John founded the Front Row Foundation, a charity that's been featured on NBC's Today Show. Today, John speaks at leadership events and orientations, sharing strategies for living extraordinary lives, or as John would say, leading a fearless front row life. On a personal note, John lives in New Jersey with his wife and his two boys. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for John Broman. love to sing and dance in your car while you're driving, yes? Ah, oh, I love this group. And now listen, here's my question. When you pull up to a traffic light, do you sing and dance like nobody's around or do you dial it back a little bit? Oh. All right, so listen, I, you know, forever, I'm driving down the road. I love my windows, my windows are down, beautiful day, singing Viva La Vida by Coldplay, right? Fist bumping, feeling great, pull up to a traffic light, I dial it back. I'm like, John, why do you do that? Why wouldn't you just have fun? I, cha I challenge myself, I say, next traffic light, dance and sing like nobody's around. So I get up to the light, I'm singing, I'm dancing, and I'm just looking straight ahead, but eventually, I've gotta look. So I look to my left, and there's a car full of senior citizens just staring at me like this. Like I'm on drugs. So I just keep singing and dancing, and then the guy in the passenger seat, who's probably 98 years old, he decides that he is gonna join the dance party. And he starts dancing like this. And then his whole car starts dancing. And in that moment, I realize that's what real leadership is all about. It's not about a title. It's about living courageously so that other people are given permission to do the same. You know that great poem by Marianne Williamson? When we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. And in that moment, I realized that that is what brings you all here today. Yes? You want to be leaders? Yes or yes? Oh, I love that. Because we need you. We need you to stand for what you believe in. See, I, I believe it's so important to stand up for what you believe in. You know, I was just joking backstage that, listen, stand and be courageous and say what's on your mind. Just know that it's there forever. Right? So here's the deal. I'm at a concert one time with my good buddy who's in the room, Mr. Stan Pearson. He's an amazing guy. And we're, we're in the crowd and we watch this amazing performance. And at the end, I'm thinking, why is nobody standing up? Right? Everybody's just sitting down. And then I have to say, why am I not standing? But in that moment, I say, we're going to stand. So we stand up. And you know that moment when you stand, what usually happens? Everybody else stands. Not a single person stood. Me and a thousand people. And what happened was eventually I said, John, whatever you do, don't sit down. Just stand with courage. And about eight seats away, what's your name? Leah. Everybody say, hey, Leah. Leah. Right where Leah is, Leah stands up and joins me. It's just the two of us. And I don't know if she stood because she was like, I can't let this fool do this by himself. Or if she was like, no, it's really good. But eventually the whole place stood, thank you. The whole place stood and the, and the, and the musicians, the performers, they looked out and they nodded our direction to say, <coughs> Thank you. We work so hard for that. And so we appreciate it. Would you join with me now? Because there's a whole NACA crew that works their butts off to put this event on. And your advisors. Can we give them a roaring ovation right now? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the NACA crew. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Grab a seat, feeling great. Let me introduce somebody to you. This is my little boy, Tiger. And Tiger's having kale for dinner. How many of you know what kale is? How many of you are like, what the hell's kale? How many of you are like, I just don't raise my hand, no matter what you say, John. All right, that's the only time I get you? All right. Check out what he does instead of eating kale for dinner. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Have that much fun with a limp vegetable. <laughs> you 
you all can have as much how are you? You can have as much fun as you want in this room because you create your reality. See, living a front row life is saying, if we show up to this room, we create this experience. So turn to the person around you, give them a high five and say, let's have some fun. Thank you. All right, I got a quiz for all of you. How old am I in this picture? All right, how many of you say 10 to 12? 13 to 15? 16 and older? You'd be right. In this picture, I'm 16 years old. Now I stood a towering tree. You're like, seriously? At 4'10, 4'10, I weighed 85 pounds. I drove to school that day. Now I know that's not the look of confidence. I'm terrified. This girl is even touching me. <laughs> now the deal is that this is how I lived my life for many years. I kind of walked through the hallway with my head down. I didn't, how are you? I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody really. I didn't join clubs and activities. I certainly wasn't as amazing as, amazing as all of you are here. I know it's, it's a trick. By the way, it says a lot that you are here right now. So I tip my hat to you and, and I congratulate you for choosing to be here. This is an awesome place to be. Right? And you're, and you're choosing to make a difference. I was terrified. By the way, like literally three times in my career, somebody has shouted out from the audience, which one are you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so after a while, I get tired of living like this and I have a life-changing experience. I'm at a concert. How many of you love live music? Anybody like Jason Mraz? So I'm Jason Mraz, all the way towards the back. What's your name, sir? Everybody say, what's up, Brandon? I look to the front. And I see these girls having the time of their life. You know, they're standing up, they're shouting out requests, and I'm like, man, the energy in the front is so much different. And you know that, right? If you've been to the front, you get the energy is different. Now, Brandon, if I was just to stand right here, I'll prove it. The energy is different in the front. And I didn't move for the rest of my showcase. Would this be a different experience for you? Yes or yes? <laughs> yeah, yes. So the deal is, that the key to life is putting ourselves in proximity, close to that which inspires us, right? We can choose to either be a spectator in the back or a participant up front. And it's not just in school. By the way, studies can support and show that if you did sit in the front, your grades naturally go up for many reasons. But this is about how we live our lives. Ask yourself right now, do you live as a spectator or a participant? When I go to campuses, whether it's leadership events or orientations, my goal is for students to live with courage, right? To step up, to stand up, to speak up, and to have the courage to be themselves. I teach five big ideas. How many ideas? Five, five big ideas. I'm going to give you just two of them today, and here is the first one. The first is deciding who to be around, who's in your front row. Like the, one of the biggest decisions we ever make in our life is who do we put ourselves in proximity to? Who do we get in our front row that can cheer us on? This summer, my little boy was walking past this wall and said, Papa, I want to climb it. I said, buddy, why don't we go do this other thing? Because I thought he's four. He's probably not going to make it up this wall. But I said, you know what? Let's give it a shot anyway. Even though in my mind, I was like, no way. He scurries up 35 feet on the wall to that spot. I look at my wife and I say, babe, I don't think he's going to make it past there because the wall comes out like this. There's no way. But sure enough, in that moment, he looks back and he goes, I can't, Papa. I tried. And I looked at it and said, it's okay, buddy. You did your best. And right in that moment, this guy in the blue shirt at the bottom, he looks over at me and says, I think your boy could do it. <laughs> I was like, I'm the worst dad in the world, right? The guy at the carnival believes in my son more than I do. He looks up at my boy and he goes, buddy, try again. <laughs> and my little boy goes all the way to the top, smashes the button, and celebrates. I'm losing my mind. I'm so proud of him. But I doubted him. And the truth is, by the way, I should believe in him more than anybody, right? The problem is, we treat people like we remember them yesterday, Justin. Not as who they've become today. And, and even people that love us do that to us. And we do that to others. So on the way out of the park, I pass this, and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Tiger's like, can I try it? I'm like, you bet. You've got this. He turns around and does this. Strike. Yeah, Tiger! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah! You did it, buddy. Look at that face. Now, I should believe in him more than anybody, and I think I do, but I have to tell you that even as his dad, I doubted him for a minute. 
The truth is that when we create a front row life, we surround ourselves with people that cheer us on, that believe in us, that push us further than we think we can even go ourselves. And we need to do that for the people that we are in their front row. Because you are in somebody's front row, Josh, right? From the Paul. Dude, it's great to see you. So the deal is, your front row is the most important decision you ever make. I interviewed hundreds of graduates and I said, when you look back on your college experience, what's the best and worst decision that you made? You know what they said the best decision was? The right peer group. You know what the worst decision was? I wish I chose better peers. And not just peers in the same age, but professors and faculty and everybody that you can connect and learn from and form solid relationships with. Not a new idea, but the question is, how much time do we put into that? Right? Some people we need to push back in our lives and some people we need to bring forward in our lives. The first idea is to connect with amazing people. This room is filled with them. By the way, here's a crazy thought. The most important and significant relationship of your life could be in this room right now and you've yet to meet them. But I know you're surrounded by some amazing people, so turn to the person to your left and your right and say, I'm so lucky to be here with you now. Go. <laughs> Second big idea. If you're ready for number two, say, give it to me, John. Some of you are like, that felt weird. <laughs> so the deal is, second big idea is to create your own reality. Now, real quick, everybody check your energy level right now. One to ten scale. Ten, most energy you can have. Can't sit still. One, you're about to fall asleep. Where are you? If you're zero to five, put your hand up. If you're six to ten, put your hand up. All right, if you're at 10, where are you? There you go, 10s, I love it, love it. I'm gonna teach you how to get more energy right away, right now. Here's what we're gonna do. In a second, I'm gonna say go. You're going to jump out of your seats with tons of energy. That's right, put all your stuff down. And you are going to hug the person to your left and your right. If you don't have anybody to your left immediately, you can hug across the aisle. You can hug the person behind you, in front of you, whoever it is. You're already hugging. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Here's the deal. Before you do this, there's a rule. When you do this, there is no butt out space in between hugging. Like, I can't get any further away from you and call this a hug. I want to see the rocking back and forth. I love you and haven't seen you in 10 years. That type of hug. Now, wherever I do this, and ladies and gentlemen, it could be 2,000 people at a convocation. It doesn't matter who it is, where it is. And everybody in the room, everybody's hugging. I see two different reactions. I go, we're going to hug. And somebody's like, ho, oh, I'm coming for you. Like, they're ready. How many of you are like, I don't need any crap. I'm ready to hug. I love you people. Somebody's going to stand up by their seat like this is their least favorite part of the day. Like, they don't have the energy for this. They're like, oh, if you see that, attack them. They need your love. Jason Lavasser, don't go anywhere. Stan Pearson, don't go anywhere. Hug those two men, All right? So here's the deal. You're gonna jump up, you're gonna hug. You're gonna hug two people for about three to five seconds each and you're gonna sit back down. And I'm gonna ask you a very important question. Are you ready for this say, oh yeah? Oh, yeah. Here we go, one, two, three, hug! If you can only see your faces. Right now, rate your level of energy on a one to 10 scale, and if it went up, even by a little bit, say, oh yeah? Of course it did, because in life, we must oftentimes act our way into feeling. See, we can't always choose our seat but we can always choose to have a front row experience. The best leaders in the world, the most amazing people in the world know that it's not all up to us to make NACA great. You as the crowd get to dictate that as well, don't you? You get to bring your energy. Two ways to show up to an event. What can I get from it and what can I bring to it? I hope you continue to show up during the next couple days of what you can bring. What I want to teach students is five big ideas to connect with people, to form amazing partnerships, to create their own reality, to change themselves, 
to commit to why they must achieve their biggest goals and dreams, and to give back along the way. Because it's not enough just to get what you need. You, you're born to give, to make a difference in the world. If this sounds like something for you and your campus, here's my invitation. GetStudentsEngaged.com. You can go there right now, you put your name and your email in, and I'll shoot you a 90 second highlight video of this speech. If you think that your school values those things, then this program is a perfect fit for you. I want to tell you that my goal is to change students' lives in the way they live every day. Not on campus, but also off campus. Like this girl, Olivia. Olivia sends me this picture after a program she saw at University of Dayton, and she says, John, after your program, I decided to connect with some people, create a trip to Hawaii. We needed to change a bunch of things in our lives to make it work, but we pulled it together because we were fully committed and we gave back along the way. We shared the front row message of the charity and the mission and the business. And Olivia is, is why I do what I do. I challenge you, live a front row life. Create as many front row moments as you can. And ladies and gentlemen, come by the